All right, so I'm gonna hit broadcast and I'm gonna mute myself. Welcome everyone. Uh, we're gonna get started um, and we have a lot to cover. So we wanna get started on time. Um, welcome to the second installment of our process and practice series at Dudene sponsored by the Wingate Foundation and the New York City COVID-19 Response and Impact Fund, as well as donations from people like you guys who are on this webinar today. Um, in case you don't know me, my name is Tatiana Ginsberg, and along with Amy Jacobs, I'm the co-director of Artistic Projects and a master collaborator at Dudene. And in case you don't know her already, Amy Jacobs is an artist in her own right and received her MFA in interdisciplinary book and paper arts from Columbia College Chicago and studied for two years at Penland School of Craft as part of the core fellowship program. She's taught workshops at many museums and universities, including in Cortona, Italy. And she um, uses textile-based exploration of imagery in her own work, embracing traditional and experimental papermaking techniques, as well as book arts and installation. Amy has been working with artists at Dudene for the past 10 years, and today she will be talking with Lima Puerta. I'll be monitoring the Q&A, so if you have questions as we go along, please feel free to type them in there. Um, you'll see the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and it'll pop up a little dialog box. And if we can, we'll ask them during the webinar. Otherwise, we'll try to hold them to the end. So. Um, but do feel free to type in at any time um, any questions that come up. This year marks the 30th anniversary of our workspace program. So we're really pleased to present some of our past workspace artists and all of their unique work um, in conversation with the people that they collaborated with in the studio. Um, the workspace residency is for New York State based emerging artists um, and that is self defined so people can be emerging at whatever stage in their lives they feel they are emerging. Um, every year a rotating panel of artists and art professionals serve as jurors and we accept four artists per year. Um, most of the artists have never made paper. We encourage experimentation, um, developing new processes, and each of the artists is paired with a professional papermaker collaborator. So that would be either me or Amy. And you can currently apply to Workspace for the 2021 cycle until June 30th of this month. So please um, go ahead and apply. Take a look at our website. Now it gives me pleasure to introduce our friend, Lena Puerta. Um, Lena was one of the first artists that was working in the studio when I joined Dudene, and so it's really nice for me too to have her here today. Lena examines the relationship between nature and human made things in her mixed media practice. As you'll see in the presentation today, she uses colors and textures expertly while addressing issues of social justice and sustainability and food safety. Her artistic process is in great part guided by the physical qualities of the materials, their textures, forms, and colors. And she uses that through the complex lenses of femininity, fashion, sexuality, and artificiality. Lena was born in New Jersey um, to Colombian parents, raised in Colombia, and lives and works in New York City. She holds a master's in, in art education from Queens College CUNY. In addition to being a 2016 Dudene Workspace resident, she's had many other wonderful residencies at places such as the Joan Mitchell Center in New Orleans, Kohler, the Lower East Side Print Shop, Smack Melon, Material for the Arts, Wave Hill, Socrates Sculpture Park, and she's currently artist in residence at Sugar Hill Children's Museum of Art and Storytelling in Harlem. She's been awarded a NIFA Fellowship in Crafts and Sculpture, an Art Prize 8 Sustainability Award, and a Joan Mitchell Painter and Sculptors Grant. She's had exhibitions at the Ford Foundation Gallery, the Museum of Biblical Art, Brick, El Museo del Barrio, Socrates Sculpture Park, Wave Hill, and Gary Contemporary, as well as um, 21C Museum Hotels in Louisville, Kentucky, 
Bentonville, Arizona, and in Pi Artworks in London. So welcome, Nina and Amy. And uh, I will jump off of this now and leave you to it. Sounds great. Thank you, Tatiana. Hi, Lena. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> thanks for coming. Um, I yeah, wanted to... uh, We're so excited. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to start off by showing just a few pieces uh, that were made before your residency. And these were, I think, in your application. And I remember falling in love with your sense of, for your sensibility to the materials and the layering and the texture and the colors and using um, hard materials and soft materials. And I knew when I saw these pieces that you would, it would be wonderful to work with you in the studio and that you could really do something great using paper pulp. So there's another one of those. This first piece is something that's pretty representational of the rest of your workspace work, what you made there. And I did want to ask you, why, why did you want to work in paper? Why did you want to work in pulp? And why did you want to um, have a residency at Dudenay? Thank you. Um, so great to be here with, with you, Amy, and everyone from Dudenay. And, um, well, um, <clears throat> I think I have always been interested in uh, or curious and me different artist friends had participated, like uh, Freddie Lay. By Saya Wolfak. And I had seen what they had done with the material and I was quite inspired by, by their, their use of, uh, by their work and their use of the material that um, that's what um, encouraged me to and and they as they as artists and friends That's great. Let's see. You're freezing up on me. I don't know if I'm freezing up on you. Uh, we're getting some comments that pe from people that the sound is fading in and out um, on Lena a little bit. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, you were actually freezing up a little on Tatiana, was I freezing up at all? Uh, you weren't, but Lena was. Okay. Um, um, well, you can go through the... Okay. <laughs> you can go through the slides if yeah, you like. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in and talk about... I can't hear you. Okay. So I'm going to talk about how we you. work with... Can't you can't? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Um, Let's see. I can try to. I wonder if not, if having your, uh, there you go. I can try to go back on. Okay. <laughs> Oops. So I'll, I'm just going to talk about the process and see if we can resolve this. So when we start working with an artist, when they first come in, like Tatiana said, most artists have um, never made paper before. About 95% have never made paper. So it's up to the collabor collaborator to kind of introduce them to the materials and the different techniques um, so that they're learning a lot and they're experimenting a lot as they're coming in the studio and we can kind of develop a project. So there's a lot of back and forth between the collaborator and the artist to develop a plan. Um, the workspace residency, you have five days to come in over the course of a year, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you can make a lot of work. When an artist comes in, we've already talked about what colors they want to use. We've figured out what pulps they want to use. So they'll give us either swatches of colors or Pantone numbers that we then um, can have everything pigmented before they come. So when they walk in the studio, everything is set up so we can just hit the ground running. So with Lena, she would give me, 
I don't know, 20 colors it felt like to pigment, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And I would have everything, I know, no, I would have everything ready um, and set up when she walked in. So here you can see, this is in our old studio space um, in Midtown Manhattan. And here you can see, I've got a couple stations set up and we're pulling a sheet in the background there using a deckel box instead of a traditional um, bat and a, a mold. Because she was working with so many colors, we would have, you know, each sheet would be a different color. So it made more sense to do it that way. And then all of those squeeze bottles are filled with pulp paint, which we use a linen fabric that's pigmented using raw pigments and um, methyl cellulose. So they were different consistencies for Elena, depending on what she was doing. So some of the pulp bleedy and some were a little bit water, like had a lot more water in them. So Lena, I'm just gonna go through kind of the technical stuff, but jump in anytime. Okay. So for Lena, I would pull these um, base sheets for her. And I think this was one of the first days you were working. So you brushes and the squeeze bottles and pouring and then also um, playing around with collage materials. So you would bring in a lot of fabrics and um, I don't know, trims, stuff like that. And I would give you that little cart that you could kind of pile everything on. <laughs> um, and where, I, I guess I should ask, where did you, where do you get your materials that you bring in? Well, I I've been working with materials. I think they're an integral part of my practice. So I just uh, collect piles of <laughs> different things that I'm attracted to. And prior to this, I had done the materials for the arts residency, which is a wonderful place. And, uh, and so many of these materials I um, gathered from my residency there and I, I try not to, I, I'm also interested in working with um, reuse or materials that are discarded. Uh, and when I was at Materials for the Arts, there were many materials that I would not normally purchase or work with, but that I kind of discovered while being there. And, and they kind of made their work into, made their way into my yeah. work. Um, so some of these many of these materials in fact like they were a lot of, can you hear me yes there were a lot of like sequin materials that uh i had not used before that much which you definitely okay sorry now <laughs> and that um <laughs> yes exactly so um in this particular work uh the the sequin fabrics were like i really loved how they they um, fused in with the with the paper, and, yeah. and that was something that I was not doing before. But oh, but sorry. it was yeah. And um, I I remember also Amy that um, what was very important for me was that I was I mean you kind of say that I knew what I was doing, but I really <laughs> had no idea. <laughs> I, I mean, like in the beginning of the residency, I was like, I'm not really sure what I'm, <laughs> how to do this, but you were great because uh, I remember you saying, well, let's have one day of um, experimentation. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that? Yeah, you have to. And, uh, yeah. And I think that was what really helped me understand the material and even though it was only one day it was very intense um, and it allowed me to and of course with your with your um, with your expertise you know I was it, it, it was great that whatever I had like questions you'd be like try this or try that or or I don't know let's let's <laughs> see you know and yeah. uh, I think that was really wonderful to have that day of exploration with you which would have, wouldn't have been the same if i had tried it my uh, on my own uh, because i don't know the material as 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 you do mm -hmm. so that was definitely uh so um important 
and 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 key and 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 making the rest of the residents. Yeah, well, that's why I love my job because I get to collaborate <laughs> with artists like you that are willing to experiment and kind of expose yourself to working in a medium that you've never, you know, used before. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get back to the technical just so they can see. Okay, so sure. <laughs> here you're laying and I, I see that this is one of the sequined fabrics. Mm -hmm. So we have that first base sheet of pulp. Pulling another sheet that we're then laying on top of that fabric. You can see that here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was the snake one, I think. Oh, this, this one? Was, yes. Right. So you'll see a piece with snakes in it in a bit. Yes. So Lena really embraced this technique called a blowout. And I feel like you use it. Yes, I love so that. I love that technique. It's magical. Right. It's me too. I think it's magical too. Yeah. So for a blowout, you have, you're using something as a stencil. So it can be a piece of fabric, um, like what you're is a very open lace, or sometimes people use a mylar or other actual objects. So here you have put that open lace on top of a piece of paper. It's actually the paper, then a piece of fabric, then a piece of, um, paper and here you've also used mylar around the edges to create a frame and you're kind of masking off the area that you don't um you know you don't want to um, you want it to stay the same so she's holding a kind of uh, a mister that's called a fogget that creates a fine mist and using the water pressure to then um, move all of the pulp that's not underneath that stencil so you can have, um, and you use both the positive and the negative sometimes. So mm -hmm. I've got a little video. And the fabric wanted to float a little. So that's why you're having to hold it down. So she's pushing all of that pulp away. And I've got another video here that, whoops. Hey, Lena, can you start that video? Sorry. It kind of went. Um, you know what? I don't think I can because. Um, yeah. OK, everybody bear yeah. with me. I don't know why it's doing this. All right, well, there's can enough. <laughs> talk as you try, <laughs> right. as you try, but. Uh, right. So for this, this is from another series, but she's using Mylar here. Um, in the fabric so you've cut out like little leaf shapes i think um that you're using for the blowout technique and again oh, from another piece um i also like yeah. no go ahead in the previous slide um that you can in the previous two slides if you can move it back that yeah, one? i also like the pink in the red, yeah. Uh, actually, the next. Huh? Okay, you froze. Sorry. That's okay. We're having technical difficulties. Okay. There we go. Uh, now the video is. Yeah. Working. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you're excavating down to that fabric. Yes. And that's why this the sequin fabric is so great because it really shows through. Mm -hmm. And there's a little more detail. Mm -hmm. So here you're working, I think this is one of your first or second days where um, as you were learning about the materials and the different techniques, you were creating these small like 11 by 14 pieces that I seem to remember that you already had an idea of what you wanted to do with them. So even though you were learning and it was an experiment, um, they ended up becoming one piece. So here you're doing the blowout and then you're pulp painting mm -hmm. and adding collage material onto that. Yes. Um, I, we had already had one day of experimentation and because 
the residency is only five days. To me, that time is so, so precious <laughs> that I wanted to, and I remember you saying that we were going to work small. For that first day, yeah. It's just easier. I want to work. Yes, exactly, for the first day. And I thought, well, I had the idea, because I also was working with, uh, like, fragment. I was interested in, like, fragments and uh, things that are deteriorated and in decay. So I um, came up with the idea of, of creating um, a piece made out of these nine uh, panels that um, resembled a rug. That's right. Uh, yeah. So I had actually planned this out. Uh, like I made a sketch and I planned out all of the stencils for them and uh, made them brought them in the day that we were working on this already pre-cut. Right. And you already had most, I mean, you would bring in a lot of materials, like collage materials and all of that, but you, you already had an idea of how you would be using them. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So here you're using fur and there's little, I'm going to go back one, there's little metal chains. Um, yes. And we do, we did have to use pulp sometimes to help adhere those mm -hmm. objects because they were kind of heavy. So we would tack, take a squeeze bottle with pulp and kind of tack them down. Mm -hmm. And then here's the final piece for that drive. Yes, yes. And I remember with this piece that um, perhaps in the, I don't know if you can see in the previous one that the color once the, once the, that, the this burgundy color dried it dried much lighter than than i wet. than how it looked when it was wet um right. and that part was was just um i was not ha happy with the color uh, mm -hmm. uh, or i was a bit disappointed because i wanted a deeper color and uh and and you were like you have the you had the <laughs> The solution, and you were like, "Well, you can spray them with um, with a varnish." Remember? Yep, yep. And, every um, artist wants. And so we. I was just gonna say, every artist that we work with wants it to look like it does when it's wet. Like they yeah. want it to look that way, which of course it yeah, has yeah. to dry and it changes. So. Right, right, yeah. I mean, I think that's that. Um, you know, now I know that, but um, but with this piece, it was. Uh, the colors were just off for me, so um, so I did the varnish, and it was a big pain because I had to mask all of those sequins and all oh of the gosh. fur and all of that. Wow, yeah, you're, was, dedicated. Oh, you're dedicated. Actually, yeah, it was it was. <laughs> I actually like um, recru recruited my niece to help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, I would have not known more how to you know fix that if it if it hadn't been for you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's. I'm gonna look at a few more of your workspace yeah. work. So in a lot of these um, pieces, so some of them are quite large. I think they're thirty by forty inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there were three of this size. Okay. Plus plus the rug piece that's another large piece but right so you had to learn to make those large sheets with me <laughs> and oh. um mm -hmm. we ended up create figuring out how to create these little wind you had um found and collected insect wings so yes um there you go So in this, they're put between two very translucent pieces of Abaca paper. So yes. Um, when uh, I had a, I had created pre previous to this work. Yes. <laughs> So we're, this is a studio shot from the old studio and you can see how big the paper is. So we're taking the pulp mm -hmm. away to create those little windows and then putting a sheet down and then um, using methyl cellulose to glue down the, the insect wings. And are these from? And this, they are. Um, 
I previous to this work, I was work. I did uh, a series of collages that I, that it's an ongoing series, and uh, where I used um, insect wings that I of of found dead insects um, that I um, that I that were found when I was in Colombia because I when I visit Colombia I go to a house in in the country, so. Um, because they relate to like death and decay and and life also life and death so i wanted to incorporate them and uh this this is a window we did with abaca paper which is mm -hmm. which was so beautiful be abaca is so beautiful because it's so translucent so um so this was also an experiment that mm -hmm. that i'm glad that it worked out yeah yeah and we had to figure i mean there's a lot of trial and error when working you're kind mm -hmm. of working backwards sometimes mm -hmm. and when things get bigger they're harder to do when you have to flip um the pellon with the paper on it or yeah yeah so there were a number of these with the the windows mm -hmm. amy we um and lena we have a question about um if uh, we had any you had to do anything special to dry the sheets um, and if you had any problems with the materials separating from each other at all so with some of like the whenever fur or when she was using the chain I would actually put a small piece of foam on top of them before pressing them in the hydraulic press and then occasionally in the drying system, in our restraint drying system so that they would dry nice and flat so that we wouldn't damage any of our blotters or cardboard or sometimes we had to actually put a, a piece of paper that we had just pulled on top of something that I wanted to be very careful not to damage the mold. So we would just very carefully do it and kind of tap the paper off. Um, and then sometimes if the, collage material was very heavy, we would have to secure it with little, little bits of pulp. So Lena would decide where she wanted to put them, or sometimes I would help build it up. So we would create like little, um, I don't know, like little, uh, I don't know. We would just build up the sides with a lot of pulp, right? I mean, I mm -hmm. you remember that. Yes. We were, so. I also, um, there are some of the materials, like some of the, some of the fabrics that have a lot of plastic so that it won't stick as well. Like if it doesn't have enough uh, holes in it, it won't stick as well to the pulp. So um, I sometimes put squirt in a little bit of PVA, mm. uh, the PVA glue. Uh, sometimes I just do it after it's dry. Like yeah. it, it, will, it will just come apart and I make sure, actually I very, almost always I have to, because I work on the pieces after they're dry, um, that's the first thing I do. I look around to see any parts that are not well glued, and I you, and I use PVA too. Yeah, and to, sometimes uh, I would do that when I would unload the drying system. I would do the same thing. I would tack things yeah. down. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The snakes; those are actual snake skins <laughs> in the piece. Those are actual snakes. So, so yes. Um, those are also when I. Um, those are also from Colombia that my sister-in-law. I asked her to collect some insects from me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, some no, insects. Yeah. I asked her to collect because she lives in the country. She, I asked her to collect any insects that she would find around. And when I came back to visit her like a year later, she had not only insects, but she had all of these tiny uh, snakes and she had all kinds of creatures. <laughs> um, and so I thought, wow, these snakes, I feel I, I have to use them. So, so I, I- That was a first for me. <laughs> And I you and put the all snakes, kinds of thing in paper. Yeah, and uh, and they were not not all of them were that shape. Like I shaped them, like I had to moisten them and shape them before. <laughs> I'm remembering <laughs> before that. Them into the video. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, funny. All right, so I've got two more workspace pieces. And then do you want to just quickly talk about this one and how this made you think um, a little bit differently of how you could work with paper? Well, this piece um, was one of the last pieces from the residency uh, and we uh, completely ran out of time. And uh, <laughs> because I also work a lot on them, um, while while the work is still wet so it's hard to it's really like a marathon it's very it's hard it's a lot of work um and um I remember that day that uh the next day I think I because I didn't know enough so I called you Amy I think I texted you like oh is there any way I can take it home and work on it at home and then why I said, it was wet that's what yeah, you well, it was still wet and it was big and I, but I was like somehow I don't know I'll get it home and work on it and finish it at home and uh, I, I think I didn't sleep that night and then you were like don't you were like no you can't it's in the drawing system it can't be taken out but you can work on it afterwards. You don't worry, you can work on it after. And so I had no option uh, but to work on it after. But uh, you were like, you can do this and that. And so I, uh, I remember I had some of the evening classes that were part of the residency. So I think I did these blowouts, um, the top and the bottom. Blowouts. Uh, and I added a lot of the lace. I added lace on top. The black lace was actually glued on top, and the butterfly wings as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, and this was very helpful for me because it helped me understand that you can that the work can be um, worked on so much. You know, it can be. Um, that there is so much I can do on top, you know. Right. So right. It, it, that it's not that cheating. A, that it's yeah, not so, cheating. So that that. <laughs> it all have to be done that day in the wet. I know. Season. I think. Yeah. 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 I think I was kind of like a purist before, and then once I saw what I could do after, it was like, right. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So you also during your residency, you wanted to be able to take the work or take paper and work on it in your studio space. So um, we would make a lot of smaller sheets and do pulp painting or blowouts or use stencils that I would then partially press in the hydraulic press that you, we would wrap up then in, in garbage bags or plastic bags and you would take them with you and put them in your refrigerator yep. so that you could use them for a laminating technique, kind of like paper mache and started to um, put them over different armatures. So you had these wire baskets that um, I think you had used in some previous work, but he- Yes. And then you made a lot of these um, fragments that um, ended up becoming an installation. Can you tell me a little bit more about these? There, I was before this. I was more um, interested in ideas of like, like patterns around the home um, and how uh, the relationship between nature and and the home, home as a body, and and how nature breaks down these structures. And so this is like a in, inspired by a by floor tiles or wall tiles. And uh, I use fur to uh, mimic plant growth. That's right. Around it, yeah. And how it, how it breaks. So Lena's completely frozen. Tatiana, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Um, Lena, if you can hear us, uh, try to close out of Hello. Hello. on your computer. Hi, Lena. 
Uh, we're can you hear me? You're freezing up again. Uh, we can hear you, but you're not moving. Can you make sure to close hello? out anything on the computer that is... Uh, hello, hello. Uh, okay. Can you hear me, Lena? Uh, Hmm. Hello? Now we can hear you. Nope. <laughs> All right, she'll come back on. So maybe I'll just move ahead and hopefully she'll join us in a minute. Um, Lena came back after her workspace residency to work on this really large commissioned project. There you are, Lena. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know that's what's okay. happening. <laughs> no, that's all right. So I was just telling them that you came back to work on this um, field to table tapestry piece. Uh, it was an installation for the Southern Foodways Alliance a Symposium that I think was also was sponsored by 21C Museum. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a big deal because first off, it was a really large project, a large commission, but also it was a different way of working for you and using figure figures in your in your pieces. So it was a lot out of your comfort zone in a way. Yes. And if you could just share with us um, about the, the project and about your working method behind this. Um, yeah. Uh, this in 2016. Well, this was a this was an opportunity that um, um, came that I that I was invited to uh, submit and a proposal for uh, by the Southern Foodways Alliance, and they are a, an organization based in Oxford, Mississippi, that uh, studies culture through food, and so I I. That, that year, uh, 2017, they had, um, they, every year they do a symposium and they pick a theme. And that year, the theme was El Sur Latino, the, the Latin South. And so I did, um, I made this proposal uh, of doing these tapestries around farm workers, Latino farm workers in the US. And, and I was, uh, lucky that I got it and um, before that I was sort of in after the 2016 election I had thought that because of all the anti-immigrant sentiment in in the in the country that I I had the um, desire to do something that related to the Latino culture but I didn't really know exactly like what to do and uh and sometimes it's interesting sometimes when you ask for something like it it <laughs> it comes so right. um so this work i um i um i included i think in this uh image you can see uh on the on the back and i don't think i can can you see my cursor no mm. Well, in the back, you can see like uh, embroidery from a huipil, which is like um, an indigenous um, blouse that some of the Mixteca women wear. And, and, I, and in one of my visits to Mexico, I think I bought um, a huipil, a shirt that, that I think I actually wore at one point. And so I wanted to bring in some fabrics that related to the richness of the um, of the ancestral cultures of Mesoamerica which is where from where many most of the farm workers in the US come from Central America so I wanted to honor them and and bring some of this these uh, materials that related to them like this these crochet squares that you see here in the center of this image Mm -hmm. Those like my mom made, she crocheted those. Um, so I bring in materials that, that, are, that, I, that are kind of personal as yeah. well. Um, and um, and this, in this series, um, I also, you know, I, I included, I brought, I, the images were all 
source through different um, news outlets that I, that I basically searched online. Uh, so the images as well as many of um, these quotes I took from quotes that related to different social issues that many of the, that most of the farm workers um, endure. Um, I included them in, in this series. And also each tapestry focused on one crop and each crop includes uh, the food, the plant, the flower, the fruit, and also the, the pollinators mm -hmm. because it's like the whole cycle of the plant. And also I wanted to think of the farm workers also as part of that cycle. Right. And, and, and thinking of also like sometimes um, the farm worker, you know, they, they are a very marginalized um, community, but um, I also wanted to highlight the beauty of this cycle mm -hmm. uh, of, that we have lost touch with, yeah. you know, the, the, the cycle of, of the plants. We don't think about, and you also don't think about where your food is coming from. Exactly. Yeah, so. And, and also many of these pieces, like for instance here, well, you want to talk about this one? Sure. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the peppers, the peppers, um, the hot peppers. Very hot peppers. Yes. <laughs> Well, I can, I can say, but the hot, uh, so this was, I also tried to bring in the actual fruit to use as stencils and I was not sure. I had done some experiments with uh, some studies, but not with every single fruit. So yeah. I wasn't, wasn't sure how it would come out. And with this piece, um, we put down the peppers and uh, Amy, you and I did the blowout together and we made the huge mistake of not wearing gloves and huge. boy do <laughs> and boy were our hands were burning for right. like the rest of the day we like yeah. texted each other I was like scared I was like oh my god I'm gonna have to pay your medical bill <laughs> both of ours <laughs> so we, we were using water so it didn't we couldn't feel anything right in the moment it didn't point. It yeah. was like hours later and yeah. I was like, don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I put on so much cream and it's yeah. still like, yeah, I, I, I it felt a little bit like, when is this going to go away? <laughs> I know. I remember. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's funny. So yeah. So this was peppers, right? Yeah. The chili pepper. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yes, you know, regarding the figure, this was the, a bit scary project, even though I proposed it, but sometimes you like, huh? you come up with great ideas and then you have to actually make them and it's right. scary sometimes. <laughs> but um, so uh, what, what was good, I mean, I, I did some studies in paper with, with the, through some of the um, group the group pro the group um the rentals session, yeah group rentals but but uh, what i decided to do for this project was to make stencils for each figure so i had time to really work on the figure at home and uh and also because they had to be a certain size and they had to fit well the you know i had to think about composition and many things so i so the 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 figure it's all um, created with a stencil. However, many of the details like the eyes or, or, or um, the, the mouth, those I, I filled in uh, yeah. as I, as I um, while, while I was in the studio. Yeah. yeah, well, it's hard to get that detail. And you, yes. we were working together four days on this, correct? Yes. So we made all of these in four days, yes. which is amazing. It was very intense. <laughs> I think you had two collaborators. Tatiana yeah. was with us, and then we also had to hire an assistant besides yes. interns that were there. And I couldn't, st I didn't even stop for lunch because I just couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't eat anyway because it was just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's very, very intense those days. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to move on just because we've had technical difficulties. So I want to make sure we have time yes. for a, a few. Yes, questions. sure. So um, 2018, you made a lot of these portraits that were um, of farm workers, but I think some of these were made as test pieces before mm -hmm. the field to table. This is one. And of them. One yeah, of that was one. So this one you made um, during one of those group rentals. And this was, you were starting to really work on your own more at this. You didn't need a collaborator anymore. Some of yes, these things. Yes, you, 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 you um, let go of, of me. You <laughs> let go of me. <laughs> I was very proud of you. You could um, pigment your own pulp and yeah. pull your own sheets. And so I kind of took a back seat and would, you know, offer guidance or advice if you needed it, but you were really working on all of these um, on your own. Mm -hmm. So Yes, deep. and this is, this is a series, these uh, 11 by 14 smaller portraits I did as an extension of the farm workers. Um, and I did these on my own, as you said, but these were the actual portrait piece was done pre-painted pre with, mm -hmm. with paint pulp. Um, yeah. Here I didn't use a stencil, and I did these. I made these um, because in the in the big tapestry uh, farm worker series, uh, there was only one piece where you could see like the face, full right. frontal face. So I wanted to do a few more, or or several more, to kind of have have the have the actual farm worker the person the person frontal yeah. frontal right. view with and almost like coming from out of the hidden <laughs> from the bushes almost yeah um, so i use also i use stencils for the for the vegeta vegetation part yeah the blowouts yeah yes yes exactly yeah Yeah, so there's definitely a thread through from when mm -hmm. your your works in the workspace through when you're working now with this whole series. I mean, it's all kind of one big body mm -hmm. of work. Yes. Um. Let's see. And then you came back and worked in our community studio. So again, working completely like on your own. Yeah, here I was definitely on my own. <laughs> yeah, making your own pulp and pigmenting yeah. and all of that. Yes, so. um, here I realized how much work, how labor intensive <laughs> paper pulp, handmade paper is. <laughs> it is, most uh, people because, have no idea. Exactly, because uh, even through the group rentals like the pulp, would be ready um, and um, and uh, it took it was it was so much work um, but it was good to it's good to know you know yeah. and it's almost um, I feel like you're in a monastery like you have to like <laughs> <laughs> do all this labor with love you know you uh, yeah definitely and, um, and well, this series, I hear I continue using uh, a lot of the indigenous fabrics. That's something that, I, that I'm more and more interested in. And I feel mm -hmm. that, I think the, it's strange, but the materials kind of, um, kind of speak to me in some way. Yeah. Like they, they, bring, they, they kind of make their, their selves in. Right. And, well, uh, You've been doing that for years. I mean, yes, right? Yes, I, yes, I, I think. Um, but um, so, yeah, with this series, it's called, I call it the Willard um, Crop Festival series. And this series was um, based on, you know, still related to farm, farm workers, but um, this was um, based on a New York Times uh, article from 2016 um, of a town in uh, Willard, Ohio, which is an agricultural hub of the U.S. And in this area is where all of the uh, radishes, cabbages, lettuces, celery, uh, that's where they're grown. And that's what feeds all of the Northeast. 
um, and um, every year they used to uh, hold a festival for the migrant workers that would come every spring to tend to the crops. Um, and because of the anti-immigrant sentiment that year, that festival was canceled. Mm. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I think the immigrants still came, but, um, but I wanted to do um, a work that where the vegetables, where the crops are actually holding the festival. So, uh, <laughs> so it's kind of like my imagined um, festival. So I, so many of these are called like um, I think I don't. Well, this one is just called the tapestry, but the others um, are called like uh, cabbage fiesta, mm -hmm. uh, celery radish. Rice, oh yeah, radish. Oh, radish, radish and headdress. Um, <laughs> one is called confetti. So it's like, um, and I was thinking of vegetables. Of, uh, uh, I'm trying to, um, I'm, I'm seeing both vegetables and the farm worker as marginalized communities, yeah. both of them. So there's like a kinship between them and, um, and how there is this beautiful energy between them. Um, and uh, I'm not saying that there is, but I'm saying that there can be. And, uh, and, and just imagining that. And, and, um, and so this, that's basically what, what this series is about. Um, and thinking about also like how the, the system that we have, like Western system is, um, we, kind of have it wrong how we are treating um, plants and people and so mm -hmm. marginal so I'm so I'm trying to speak of marginalized communities as well as the marginalized nature that we have because we bo are exploiting both of them in the same way you know exactly. yeah so which is leading to your I'm next sorry? which is leading to your next <laughs> yes yes which is what you made during the um, lockdown or quarantine. Right. So, well, um, these were made last year in the studio, in the community right. studio. Right. But I had them in a, I had, I, last year I finished, I worked on the larger vegetable pieces that you saw. And then I had these and I hadn't worked on them. I had them in my drawer here and, and um, I was working last, the end of last year and this year on other works and fabric um, that are larger. And so that I, I was doing in Sugar Hill, which is where I have the residency now. But once I came home, these are 14 by 11 pieces and I felt compelled to work on these. And, and they're also with plants. Uh, so this is a strawberry plants strawberry plants and I and I'm thinking of the connection I think uh, also reflecting a lot on um, ancestral cultures indigenous cultures aboriginal cultures so in my case in my ancestral indigenous cultures um, before before colonialism uh, and trying to <clears throat> unlearn I think uh, the mm -hmm. colonial system that we live under and <clears throat> and trying to see vegetables and plants just vegetable plants as nature and that connection uh, with the plants as living beings you know or living organisms <clears throat> that are alive and that we have the potential to have this connection with them just as our ancestors did <clears throat> So it's thinking about that, you know. And also, I don't know, these hands, I feel that um, at this, during this time, like one of the things I miss the most being in this urban, wonderful city that I love, mm -hmm. I love, I miss, I miss my friends, I miss museums, mm -hmm. but I miss so much having access to nature. I think that's exactly. been a, 
great, a huge yeah. Um, well, and you're on the west side, right? You're in Manhattan. You're yes. in a, an apartment building too. So yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I can look out the window and I see trees, but but it's not the same as to I don't know, just being a little bit closer with nature and having like an interaction of of tending to nature. I, I have plants at home, but. Um, and I'm happy to have plants at home, but, but I'm thinking, I feel longing for it, you know? Um, and so I wonder if these hands have something to do with that as well. You know, I'm kind of still making some sense of it too. Um, and these birds, they yeah. made it, made, made it into this, it did. This, this last piece. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, this work, um, I work, I do, I work on them a lot. So, so this piece took me like over a month to do just not the, not the paper part, just the yeah. top, just the top, which is a lot, it's a lot of gluing and then a lot of painting with gouache. So it's a huge, big other step that comes after. I mean, you've been so productive <laughs> during this whole thing, which is great. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I, 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 I tried. It, yeah. Well, you know, I had periods where I couldn't do anything, but, yeah. but uh, I'm glad that I could, I feel it was a savior also to have something that I could maybe get my mind off other things. Yeah. <laughs> Did we freeze again? <laughs> oh, you guys are good. Uh, okay. I think you guys look Alina, great. Can a few uh, questions have come up and uh, one, I guess maybe the first one um, was if, if there's a catalog for your work at all, Lena, um, a lot of people have commented, um, not with questions, but just saying how much they are enjoying your work and seeing it. Um, so if there's anything like um, publications that they could be directed to. Thank you. Um, I don't have, no, no specific, not, I don't, I don't think I have any publications specifically to these works. I mean, I, they are, I have them in shows, so there have been press releases and things like that, that I can, if, if they, maybe if you give them my email, I can, I'll be happy to send them. Sure, uh, and I'll uh, post, links. Uh, I can also post the um, link to your website and the um, that great video of your farm workers project is a really nice one. Thank you. Also, um, some of the smaller pieces that I did during in the last months uh, are going to be in a sh group show at Transmitter that opens the 26th, I think, like in a week. In Bushwick? In Bushwick, yeah, in the group show there. So uh, I'm going to have six of those works um, exhibited there. If, if, uh, and it's, it will be on view online and by appointment only. So, but thanks so much. <laughs> and my website, unfor it's, unfortunately, I have to update with images. The images are not, but my IG, I can, my Instagram, I, I uh, post a lot of more recent work. Um, so that was one of my goals to do during, <laughs> during the, yeah. uh, the quarantine to uh, update the website, but hope, hopefully I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard one for everyone, I'm sure. Yes, I, know. Um, I think people are... Uh, very very sympathetic to the problem um <laughs> we had another question which is uh do you use anything other than methyl cellulose as a modifier for the pulp paint did you use any um a formation aid or anything else in the pulp paints as your layering i don't remember you really using other things um i do use some formation aid like for the um, for the portraits, 
I discovered formation aid. <laughs> well, I guess it I didn't discover drainage. It would give you time. It would allow you to have time. To yeah. Be, um, well, you have told me about formation aid, Amy, but I guess I hadn't maybe learned how to use or get the. I hadn't gotten the hang of it. But but yeah, formation aid is great. Um, so for when you want to like draw with it, right, or paint with it. Mm -hmm. So yes, I use it sometimes. Yeah, depending. Great. Um, I, I wanted to ask, um, have a little sort of side thing is, has working in paper changed the way that you have worked in other materials? I mean, you have already worked in so many different materials in so many ways. And I remember seeing um, your show um, down on Hudson Street with um, the ceramic works in combination with some of the works that you made at Dudenay and other things. So nowadays, as you're approaching kind of your work from having all of these different experiences, these wonderful experiences of making things in different places and mediums, do you think paper, working in wet paper has changed the way that you make things generally? Well, I made, uh, that's a good question. I made um, this, the end of last year, I started making a quilt and fabric and I think it's very much related to the tapestries. So it's sort of like, and it's in layers. So I think it's a way, it's very similar to the way I, I make these pieces. Um, and that on one hand, and on the other hand, I think paper pulp is always, when I'm making other things, I think it's always, as an, I always have it as another material in my head. So maybe it's not always, ma I'm not always putting paper in everything, but I always have it there as an option or I am, or I am thinking about it as a possibility. So, so that, uh, um, so that's definitely something that um, that 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 it, that yes has changed my practice. I think you know. And but you have pulp in your fridge right now, right? <laughs> oh yes, I do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, thank God I have a a partner that doesn't mind. <laughs> yes, um, I. Like I have this thing I did here on COVID with pulp paint that I did it on, on a piece of tool. So I just painted on it just to see if I could do it. And I kind of like this, but I'm not sure how I'm going to use it. So we'll see. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what I mean. I'm, it's something that, um, that it's always there, I think, you know, as another possibility. Yeah. It's in the arsenal. <laughs> That's great. Another yes. Anything else, Tatiana? Um, Lena, do you want to uh, just say your Instagram handle? Your oh, uh, Lena, Lena Puerta Art. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Lena, thank you so much. You're our first artist that we're talking to for this whole series. So I really, really appreciate oh, you. I'm um, so honored. I'm so honored. I'm sorry that I don't know if it's my internet or what it was, but that kind of kept getting disconnected. So it yeah. all worked out. It all worked out. Yeah. That's good. That's Any good. Of, uh, the people um, who have been on this webinar have commented how beautiful your work is and how great the presentation is. So Congratulations for doing thank, thank you for I want, appearing with us. <laughs> I want to encourage everyone to apply for the residency. It's wonderful. And everybody at Dudonay, not because you're here, but all of you are <laughs> lovely people. <laughs> and you all, you all are artists also, which I think um, understands everything, you know, uh, the process and, and are so open. Um, so I, I, I really miss 
Dudonay, the, the studio and me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's a wonderful experience that I I would encourage everyone to to apply and and uh, and, and if and if you have a chance to take one of the classes, although I don't know when they will reopen, but I think the classes are a great uh, chance also to like experiment. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> that, little, that little plug. So I wanted to um, let everyone know, I think we brought it up, but there's a wonderful video of the making and kind of her inspiration behind the installation um, from field to table that they filmed us one day when we were in the studio. It's really beautiful video if you have a chance to, to see that. And I put the link for that in the Q&A. Oh. We can, uh, can post it elsewhere too. Great. And then I also just want to thank again um, NYC COVID-19 Response and Impact Fund and also the Wingate Foundation for funding this whole series. It's new to us and it's been um, really fun. And I think we're looking forward to um, talking to more artists and bringing in past workspace artists. Um, so we'll, we'll announce that short, you know, soon, within the next couple of weeks, we hope to have some more, so. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Lena, so much. Thank you, guys, and thanks for everyone yeah. who connected. <laughs> it was my Great. pleasure. Love Great. you. All right, love you too. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you.